Hi folks, Mr. Ackerman here. Thanks for watching. In today's video, I want to talk to you about what I think is the most important thing in photography, and that is light. The word photography comes from Latin. It actually comes from two words, roughly photo, which means light, and grapho, or graphic, or image. So when you put those two together, you kind of start to get an idea of what it is we're doing when we take images. We are using light to make a drawing. So it stands to reason that the kind of light, the quality of light, the direction it's coming from and so on, is going to have a major impact on the images you produce. Think of yourself like a painter. A painter uses paint to create an image. You are a photographer, you use light. The painter puts paint on whatever medium, let's say it's canvas, or paper or a wall, you are putting it onto a digital sensor and then displaying it on a screen. In the past, it's been put on film. And there are some other variations which are kind of cool if you want to check those out on YouTube. But anyway, getting back to the main point here, if we understand the different kinds of light and their qualities, we can create impactful images that send the message that we want to our viewers. Now let's think for a moment, what kinds of light are there? Well, there's natural light, like from the sun, and there's artificial light, like from uh, a light that you might see in the hallway at school, a fluorescent light, uh, or a laser even. There are very diffuse kinds of light, like the kind of light you see on a cloudy day where it's kind of coming in this, the same intensity in all directions. And then there is very directional light, like during a sunrise, where the sun is low in the horizon and it's sending beams of light in one direction. Uh, there's cool light, like bluish kinds of light and whitish kinds of light. And then there's warm light, like the kind coming from a candle or again from a sunrise or sunset. There's lots of variations. And if you can keep that in mind when you make your images, you're going to start to get a lot of variety and you're going to start to be able to put your own message into the photo to get your viewer to see what you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a walk around the school, inside and outside. We're going to explore the different places where there's different kinds of light, and we're going to see what we get when we take a photo on our camera. All right, let's go. Okay, so it's about 9.30 in the morning. I'm standing right outside the school, and the sun is just blasting me with really, really harsh light. So I think what I'm going to do is move to a shadier area. Uh, how about we go over there? Okay, you're gonna see when I get there, there's a big difference in the light. Much better. I'm sure you can see now, if you compare what my face looked like a moment ago with how it looks now, the light is much, much softer. I don't have to squint, I can look at you. Probably the colors that you're seeing are coming through a lot better as well. That's the difference that can be made just by changing locations. A moment ago, I was over there in direct sunlight now I'm in the shade and everything is completely different. If I was taking a photo, you would also notice a big difference. Let's try another location to see what happens. Now I'm standing just outside the main office entrance. The sun is rising over the building right over there, but I'm still in shade and you can see the results. Look at the color on the shirt, look at the light as it hits my face and the color in my face. But now to give you a comparison, let's walk over there into the harsher sunlight to see what happens. So if I go this way, you should start to notice a few things. Like now, the light is coming from behind me, so my face is backlit, and so is my shirt. There's probably some highlights around my face and also my shirt and shoulder here, and that may be a result that you want or that you don't want. The point is for you to be able to decide by being aware of these things. If I turn this way, now the sun is coming more or less right into my face. This is with me facing it exactly, and this is with it cutting across. There's harsh shadows, the colors change, the definition on my shirt changes, lots of things change. I'm not saying that one is better than the other, what I'm saying is you want to be aware of these and decide. Now I'm going to show you something very interesting. I'm in pretty much the same location I was in a moment ago, but I'm going to make use of the building itself and the light that I have in order to get a certain effect. A moment ago, we were over there, and there was a shadow area, and there was an open area, and up above, you saw mainly sky. 
you saw how the harsh light of the sun can create interesting effects, some of which you might want, some you might not want. But now I'm going to go in here and there's something special about this location. See if you can figure out what it is. If you guessed that it's the fact that it's covered on the top and on the sides, then you're right. That's going to block the light that we have and make it come in one direction only. That direction will be from here into there. So watch what happens when I stand in that location and turn throughout a complete circle. This is facing out, even light hitting my face and my shirt, giving you a certain result. As I turn to 90 degrees, now the light cuts across my face on its way in and you have a different effect. If I face inward, now there's very little light coming this way. All of the light is coming from behind me this way and my face is strongly backlit. I don't even know if you can see it very well now. And then we finish off the circle and you get the light cutting across again. We're back to where we started. So what's the point? Well, the point is I've now made use of my environment, the building here, and the light that I have to get a certain effect. Now I'm standing outside our classroom. I'm in the hallway. There are no windows here. There's just fluorescent lights all the way up and down. And there's some lockers and painted walls to bounce the light around as well as off the floor. I happen to be standing right over one of the artificial lights. And so that means most of the light is coming straight down over my head. You're probably noticing some shadows in my eye sockets because they sort of provide a covered area that blocks some of the light. Now, I'm not saying that this is good or bad. That's for you to decide. However, it's something you need to be aware of. As I turn, are you noticing any difference? Do you expect to notice a difference? Again, you got to think, well, where is the light coming from? Right now I'm facing a locker which has sort of a purpley color and so a lot of that light's going to bounce into my face but I've still got this overhead light. And if I turn this way, now it's not the lockers that are bouncing light into my face, it's more the other lights down the hallway. Slightly different effect, is it what you want? You decide. Let's try another location indoors so that you can see how that looks. Final location. It's an indoor location where we normally think of artificial light, but what I've done is turn out all the lights in the room and I've lifted the curtains here so that I'm getting natural light coming in. Now this is facing west, so the sun is not directly in the shot, so it's softer light. It's also a little bit cloudy outside to further soften the light. I've got natural directional soft light and you can see what's happening. If I do my 360 degree turn, starting facing the light source, here's what you see. Pretty flat light, little intense, somewhat balanced. As I turn, it's probably getting a little bit more balanced. The light's cutting across my face, providing some definition. If I keep going, here it is at 90 degrees. And now we're heading toward 180 degrees. Now at this point, you probably can't see my face, so for a portrait it might not be the greatest idea, but on the other hand, I could create a nice silhouette from this. Keep going, heading back toward the light, and now you see what you saw when I was facing that way. And so that's it. That completes our tour of the school and all the different kinds of light sources you can catch inside and outside. We've seen artificial and natural, we've seen harsh and soft, we haven't seen much in the way of warm versus cool, but we'll talk about that later. The point is, if you are aware of what kind of light sources there are and what your environment is and how the different light sources reveal different things on your subject, you can create the images that you want that send the message you want to your viewer. All right, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something. I'm looking forward to seeing your photos in class. Bye for now.